Hey there, it's Shanna Matchick Myers, and let's take a look at how to decompose rational expressions into partial fractions in order to find indefinite integrals. So the first one we'll look at is if your denominator Q has only non-repeated linear factors. Remember all the time, the very first step is to check to see if the numerator has degree which is greater than or equal to the denominator. If so, just like in that warm-up problem, if you missed it, you can go back to the warm-up for 8.5. Um, if it is, you need to use polynomial long division to rewrite the expression as a quotient plus a remainder. All right, so first part, like I said, the assumption that Q has only non-repeated linear factors. The polynomial Q has the form Q at X equals X minus A1 times X minus A2 and you keep on going until you get to the last linear factor X minus A sub N where no two of the numbers A1 a2 all the way down to a sub n are equal. So in this case, the partial fraction decomposition of p over q has the form p at x or whatever your independent variable is over q at x would be equal to a1 over x minus small a1 plus a2 over x minus lowercase a2 and you keep on going until you've represented the all of these factors with different variable placeholders in the numerator. Now the numbers that we're determining are A1, A2, all the way down to capital A-N. All right, so the first example, right? The partial fraction decomposition of the rational expression in the integrand and find the indefinite integral. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the partial fraction decomposition below here and our, I'm, I'm looking at this and there's no basic formula we can use. So we've got, I'll factor out the two, no, I'll keep the two in there. We have two over nine X squared minus one. So moving into partial fraction decomposition land. So we have one over now, how do we factor 9x squared minus 1? That's going to be 3x, and this was a 2, sorry, 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. That will equal to a1 over 3x plus 1 plus a2 over 3x minus 1. Continuing, we have 2 over 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. Now we want to get a common denominator. Once we've gotten a common denominator, we'll be able to go ahead and omit the denominator and just equate the numerator expressions. So a1 is missing 3x minus 1 and a2 is missing that other denominator which is 3x plus 1. And then finally we have our common denominator of 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. 
So now we'll just equate numerators. 2 is equal to 3a1x minus a1 plus 3a2x plus a2. And then we will have 2 equals. I'm going to factor out the variables to the right. So I have a 3a1 plus a 3a2 times x, that whole quantity, and then plus negative a1 plus a2. And I don't have any x terms on the left, so I'm going to add 0 times x. Now, this is a case where we equate coefficients. And so, what will happen is we'll get 3a1 plus 3a2 is the coefficient to the x term on the right. So it has to be equal to the coefficient of the x term on the left. So we'll have this 0 equal to the 3 a1 plus 3a2. And then the constant 2 has to equal the constants on that other side. And so we'll get negative a1 plus a2 must equal to 2. Now just so it doesn't get too confusing, let's um, get the highlight off of the these here. All right, and so a2, let's see, from the top equation, we will end up getting that a2 is equal to negative a1. Then when I plug that in to this lower equation, I will get negative a1 plus another negative a1 is equal to 2, which is negative 2a1 equals 2, meaning that a1 equals negative 1. So if a1 equals negative 1, a2 must be negative negative 1, which is 1. And so up here we can write our results. So we get negative 1 for our a1, sorry I forgot the subscript, over 3x plus 1. And then plus 1 over 3x minus 1. Once we've completed that partial fraction decomp. Cool, cool? Alright, so now we bring up that result and rewrite this one. So this is equal to the integral of negative 1 over 3x plus 1 plus 1 over 3x minus 1 all with respect to x. And make sure I did both of them correctly, yes. <laughs> all right. Now each of these are going to need a factor of 3 to have, you know, the g prime if g of x is 3x plus 1 or 3x minus 1, um, we need a 3 dx. And so multiplying the outside by 1 third, I will have 1 third times negative natural log absolute 3x plus 1 and then plus natural log absolute 3x minus 1 and plus our constant of integration. Using properties of logs we'll have one-third the first one is negative um, so it'll be the denominator when we make it one happy log so we'll have natural log absolute 3x minus 1 over 3x plus 1 
and then plus C, and then finally we'll get natural log absolute cube root of 3x minus 1 over 3x plus 1. Cool, cool? All right, so next example requires an initial u substitution. So if I go ahead, I see that I've got something which is quadratic in form in the denominator. So if I let u equal to sine at x, du will be cosine at x dx, which works out nicely because we have a cosine at x dx in the numerator. So we will have this is equal to the integral of 5 over u squared plus 3u minus 4 du. Our u sub was in that sine at x. That last one is a 4, not a u, by the way. And then our du was cosine at x dx. Okay, so now this in turn is equal to the integral of 5 over u plus 4 factoring times u minus 1 du. Now you can factor the 5 out of the integral, but I find sometimes it just makes it messy to bring it, multiply it back in once we do the partial fraction decomposition. So, um, let's see, uh, we'll just keep it in there. So now our partial fraction decomposition will be, we have 5 over u plus 4 times u minus 1. And then that will equal to a 1 over u plus 4 plus a2 over u minus 1. So 5 over u plus 4 times u minus 1 equals a1 is missing a factor of u minus 1 and then a2 is missing a factor of u plus 4 in order for us to get a common denominator. And so now we have it. We have our u plus 4 times u minus 1. Groovy? Now we can just equate numerators. So 5 will equal to a1u minus a1 plus a2u plus a4, a, a2, 4, a2. Now we're missing a, a u term, right? So on our next line, I'm going to say 0u plus 5 equals a1 plus a2 all of that times u, and then plus negative a1 plus 4 a2. And then equating coefficients, like coefficients. And so we have a 0 as a coefficient to the u on the left, and then a1 plus a2 as a coefficient of u on the right. So we'll get a1 plus a2 is equal to 0. All right, and then we have our constant term on the left is 5, and on the right is negative a1 plus 4a2. And so we will have 
negative a1 plus 4a2 will equal to 5. Now, from the top equation, we'll have that a1 is equal to negative a2, substituting negative a2 in for a1 in the second equation, we will have 5a2 is 5, so a2 will just be 1, which makes a1 equal to negative 1. And then writing it up here where we started, we will have, let's see, a1 was negative 1 over u plus 4 plus 1 over u minus 1. Groovy? All right. So let's put a line around these guys so we don't get mixed up. And then our next line we will have. This whole integral is equivalent to negative 1 over u plus 4 plus 1 over u minus 1 with respect to u. And this again is a 4. All right, equals negative natural log absolute u plus 4 plus natural log absolute u minus 1 plus our constant of integration. The negative is on the natural log u plus 4, so that'll be our denominator. So we'll make one happy log. We'll have u minus 1 over u plus 4 plus c. And then now we have to back substitute. So recall that u was equal to sine at x. So we will have natural log absolute. I'm going to write the constants first. So we'll get negative 1 plus sine at x. And then 4 plus sine at x plus c. Groovy? All right, excellent work, my friends. So next up will be when you've got a repeated linear factor. So go ahead, take a break. I'm breaking this into parts. So part two, make sure you watch it, will be coming up next. Hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. If you like what I'm doing, hit subscribe, click on that like button, share the video, and I'll see you soon. Bye.